Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I've had the honor of being the president of the North American Menopause Society through 2017. I sit on the board of directors, and I am with Felicia Cosman. Please tell us who you are. Uh, I'm an endocrinologist by training, but really an osteoporosis specialist. I do some research and a lot of clinical work, uh, and I'm professor of medicine at Columbia University. So for our women who are watching, who often are unaware of symptoms of bone loss. Why are they unaware of the symptoms? Uh, well, we don't have symptoms associated with bone loss. Uh, we only have symptoms that occur when a fracture uh, happens. And so uh, we see that bone loss is a chronic and progressive process, and uh, it puts bone in a very fragile state, a weak state, uh, and then uh, finally uh, fractures occur, usually with just a simple fall from standing height. One of the things that we found as we talked to, to women over the last you know, 30 years uh, is that they often think uh, that it's the fall that produced the fracture. Right. And they don't realize that there's an underlying bone weakness uh, that causes them to fracture in a given so fall. So often I'll have a patient who will have fallen on the ice and they look at me and they say, well, if you slipped on the ice, you'd fracture too. And I would go, well, I sure, sure hope not because that's not a normal event. Fracture correct. is not a normal event. That's correct. So explain who is at risk for fracture and who is really at high risk for fracture because I really want women to hear this. Yeah, so um, just having a low bone density, meaning a bone density in osteoporosis range, uh, means that you're at risk for fracture long term. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not necessarily, if you're otherwise a healthy 55 year old woman, you're not necessarily at high risk over the next few years, it's over the next 20 years that you're at high risk. Right. Uh, but the people who are at really high high risk in the near term are people who've had a recent fracture. Those are the ones that we really want to try to uh, educate and talk about uh, using uh, treatment to build up the bone strength very quickly uh, because they're at such high risk for more fractures very soon. What else in lifestyle can women do that they don't recognize necessarily impacts on their bone health? So, you know, the earlier the better, a good healthy diet, lots of fruits and vegetables. You know, we know there are things in produce that are uh, bone protective as well as protective against a lot of other chronic diseases. So that's really important. Also, a calcium rich diet, and it's best to get it through the diet, not to pop a supplement unless you can't mm -hmm. get it through the diet. And then vitamin D we know is very important, although after all these years, we're still not sure exactly what the target is, and most of us think that you have to aim for blood test levels that are in the low 30s, uh, that uh, is the ideal uh, level. And very difficult to get there for many women uh, who don't get a lot of sun exposure uh, because the diet doesn't contain that much vitamin D. So it's more common that women have to take a vitamin D supplement than a calcium supplement, which is easy to get in the diet. And what about the role of smoking, coffee, alcohol? So coffee is really not bad, uh, and you can drink a lot of coffee. It has a very modest effect on calcium absorption, uh, but it's, it's really not that important. And if you get a, a good calcium intake, you can overcome any effect of caffeine or, or coffee. So that one I'm not worried about. Coffee turns out to be really clean for us, oh, which is great to because hear. <laughs> we drink a lot of it. Good to uh, hear. But alcohol also, uh, a small amount of alcohol, one drink a day, is safe and may actually be good for bone. But larger doses, obviously. It's a slippery slope, right? It's a slippery slope, exactly. Okay. And for people who have a history of alcohol abuse or alcohol abuse in the family, uh, you know, obviously these are not people who should be playing around. Smoking is universally bad mm -hmm. and uh, terrible for bone. Uh, you metabolize estrogen much faster. Uh, it uh, produces an earlier uh, menopause. Uh, and after menopause, you metabolize whatever estrogen is around uh, faster. Uh, and uh, these uh, people lose bone uh, more readily and suffer more fractures. And just finally, a word of advice for women who are taking medication. One, the importance of taking it properly and also the fact that women may be moved from one medication to another and they may find that confusing as to why they're being moved. Um, so, you know, really good questions. Uh, we see that uh, different medications may have benefits uh, for women at different stages of life. And, you know, if you think about a kind of long-term uh, uh, treatment of osteoporosis from age 50 to 90, 
you might think about using estrogen uh, for a few years. You might think about using raloxifene for a few years, which has the benefit of maintaining bone mass and protecting against uh, breast cancer. Uh, your more potent medications are usually reserved for a little bit later in life, uh, late 60s and, and beyond. Those are the bisphosphonates and denosumab. And then the drugs that we call anabolic drugs, which are actually bone building, they stimulate bone formation, are more appropriate for the people who have very low bone mass mm -hmm. uh, by, by T-score uh, or have had uh, fractures. And uh, those agents are usually followed by uh, the anti-resorptive drug, the other class of drugs that makes the most sense given their uh, age and other underlying comorbidities or, or diseases. And finally, one last question the importance of fall prevention for women this and is their critical. four inch heels. <laughs> yeah, this is critical and um, particularly when we get a little older and balance naturally uh, does deteriorate and muscle mass uh, is reduced uh, with age, uh, you have a much greater likelihood of falling and uh, while we say osteoporotic fractures uh, occur because of the underlying bone mass, uh, obviously the fall is a precipitant Big for trigger. it as well. And you know, that brings me back the one other thing we didn't talk about in terms of prevention and maintenance of, of, of good uh, skeletal health is exercise, yes. uh, which helps reduce the risk of falls, helps keep muscle good, helps balance, uh, and also helps the underlying bone strength. So I think both a combination of uh, some type of aerobic exercise that you do standing, as well as strength training, uh, meaning you know against a resistance, either a, a resistance band or weights or weight machines or uh, just uh, against gravity doing things like Pilates and mm -hmm. yoga. These exercises are super important to help maintain uh, strength of both muscle and bone. Thank you so much for being here. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.